Is the Golden State Warriors dynasty over? That's the question of the day. With Klay Thompson leaving and the breakup of the Splash Brothers, it's been very, very sad, but Steph Curry is now the lone ranger in Golden State when it comes to the backcourt. Golden State does have some very nice young pieces like Trace Jackson Davis, Brandon Pozemski was a really, really good rookie for them last year, and Jonathan Kuminga is blossoming into an elite role player, maybe even that second option now, and there have been whispers of Larry Markin then coming to Golden State. So, taking a look at what they've done in the offseason so far, they bring in the Splash Buddy. They've had the Splash Brothers, the Splash Nephew in Jordan Poole, and now the Splash Buddy in jo uh, Buddy Heald, who last year, I mean, he was a really good role player for Philadelphia and Indiana last year, averaging 12.1 points per game, 3.2 rebounds, 2.8 assists per game. Um, he'd only shot about 44% from the field, which isn't great, but that 39% from three, he's been one of the best high-volume three-point shooters in the league for quite some time now. Uh, and he continues to do that. I mean, he takes about 10 threes a game over the last few years, uh, especially while he was in Indiana when they would when they were just letting him let it fly. De'Anthony Melton, Kyle Anderson also will be rotation pieces. I like Kyle Anderson, really good defender. And then Melton off the bench should be nice. Now, in the draft, this is kind of flying under everybody's radar, but they go out and they grab Quentin Post, a post from Boston College um, that usually plays the five, but he can do a little bit of everything. I really, really like his skill set. He averaged about 17 points per game, eight rebounds, and three assists in his senior year at Boston College. I believe he was a senior. Um, but he played really, really well. Uh, got a turnaround bag. I mean, just watch some of his highlights. And he shot 52% from the field and 43% from three on over two attempts a game. Very good numbers for Quentin Post. He can step out. He can knock it down. I like him uh, behind Trace Jackson Davis in this lineup as maybe a guy that can contribute from day one. And that's what you have to get when you're trying to build around your veteran core. But you still have young talent. Podzimski and Trace Jackson Davis were two hits in last year's class. And Podzimski was really, really good. Um, I didn't expect him to be that good. I had him as my 19th ranked prospect coming out of college. And he was pretty good. That was around where he was drafted. But he outperformed his draft selection by a lot. 9.2 points, 6 rebounds, and 3.7 assists. Now, you might think that's not like crazy numbers. But you got to remember, he was a role player. And he was able to step in and play that role from day one on a team trying to win a championship. 45% from the field, 39% from three for Podzemski last year. And he is a really, really nice piece. Of course, went on to play for Team USA Select this year. And then you got Trace Jackson Davis, who is the 57th overall pick. And when you can get a quality role player in your rotation with the 57th overall pick, that is huge. 8 points, 5 rebounds, 1.2 assists, and 1.1 blocks per game this year for Trace Jackson Davis. I mean, those are big-time numbers for the 57th overall pick. While shooting 70% from the field, 1.1 blocks as a 23-year-old. Uh, I don't know how he fell that far in the draft, but he did right into the lap of the Warriors. And they're looking to make it two years in a row, getting a good post in the 50s in the NBA draft. Um, Moses Moody, another nice piece, another guy that is rumored to be going to Utah. We'll see what happens with that whole situation. I think he should be off the table, but we're going to talk about it more later. Moody averaged about eight points, three rebounds, and one assist per game this year for the Warriors while shooting about 46% from the field, only 36% from three. But remember, he's only 21 years old. He was an absolute dog at Arkansas while being basically the only guy on that roster that could really score the ball or shoot the ball. I think he can continue to be a developmental piece for this Warriors team at just 21 years old. And then Jonathan Kuminga, who going into year four is looking like an absolute star. On the season this year, Kuminga is averaging 16.1 points per game, 4.4 rebounds, and 2.5 assists. Or I should have said last year, that's what he averaged. 53% shooting from the field. Now, the three-point percentage is another issue. We will try and get that up next year, I assume. But for a 21-year-old, that is a heck of a season. Really nice developmental pick out of the G League, and he has turned into what I think is going to be something special alongside of Steph Curry for the back half of his career. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and take a break here. If you've made it this far in the video, obviously, you like something in this video so make sure to the like button or try to hit about 200 likes on today's video also make sure to hit that subscribe button as it will really help us out in the youtube algorithm and as you can see here a large majority of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed to the channel so if that is you go ahead and fix that and with that being said let's go ahead and get back and look at the veteran core that golden state has here to try to win steph wiggins draymond gary payton the second and kevon looney all these guys have to be on top of their game in order for the warriors to have a big year and andrew wiggins had a down year last year a lot of stuff off the court going on 
not great. It's been said that the Warriors are trying to find a trade partner. He only averaged 13 points a game last year compared to like 18 uh, during their championship run. 45% shooting from the field, 36% from three. The efficiency was down. Not a good year from Wiggins. And he's got to get back to his old self if the Warriors are even going to have a chance. But Wiggins and Kuminga on the wing could be something to fear. Um... But he's just got to get back to his normal self. Kevon Looney, they bring him back on a restructured deal. It was rumored that they were going to cut him, but bringing him back I think is big. Four and a half points, 5.7 rebounds, 1.8 assists, and he brings the championship DNA of that core that has been here since like 2018 of Looney, Steph, Dre, uh, and the other guys. 27 years old for him. He's only 27. That's crazy. People think he's like 30, but he's only been here a few years. 59% shooting from the field. And then Draymond. On the year last year, I mean, there was obviously controversy. I mean, it's Draymond. There's going to be controversy at every turn. But 8.6 points per game, 6 assists, and 7.4 rebounds for Dre last year. A solid year for the veteran. And like I said, you keep him alongside of Steph. They stick together. One steal, one block for Dre on 50% shooting from the field. He wasn't even that bad. I mean, in the Draymond role that he has carved out, he has made himself a role for the next five years if he wants to continue playing in Golden State. Now, Gary Payton II, uh, I thought bringing him back at the deadline was going to be huge. Turned out to not be 5.5 points, 1.1 assists, 2.6 rebounds. That was a couple of years ago they brought him back at the deadline. But still, it has not been as fruitful as I thought it would be. 56% shooting from the field, 37% from three. I mean, he's obviously still a great defender, but he is starting to get up there in age a little bit, so you're wondering if that is a little bit to do with it. But, I mean, he can guard one through five, as you can see there, stuff in Jokic. So we'll see what they do with Gary Payton in a second, but I think you should keep him around. Um, and then Steph Curry, obviously... You've got to do what you can to get him a championship while he is still here. 26.4 points per game, 5.1 assists, 4.5 rebounds. Overall, I mean, he's probably still the best point guard in the game. One of, if not the best. 41% shooting from three as a 35-year-old. That's pretty solid. I mean, he's going to be 36 next year, so he's really getting up there in age. But you got to do what you can to maximize the back half of his prime and or the back half of his career even and this is a possible rumor that's been thrown around Kuminga Moody and some firsts for Lowry Markin and obviously one of those would have to be a pick swap but if I am the Warriors I am saying no to this every single time if the Jazz want Kuminga for Markin I am absolutely saying no yes Markin is good 23.2 points per game two assists 8.2 rebounds but is that really that much better than Kuminga I mean Markin is doing this on a rebuilding team while Kuminga is doing it on a team trying to win a championship. 48% shooting from the field, 40% from three for Markin. And so, I mean, not, I mean, obviously elite numbers, but is it worth giving up Kuminga? I don't think so. The Warriors have to be very careful over the next few years because, as you can see here, this is their cap sheet. Um, Curry will be a free agent in two seasons, so that's a lot of money off the books there. Wiggins. Ooh, that contract is kind of bad, but DeAnthony Melton, they got on a one-year deal, and they got to maximize these picks over the next few years. Um, they don't have their pick next year or the year after that, so 2027, 2028, they're going to have to draft well. Portland owns their future, so that's going to be a little bit scary there. With that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button. Leave me a comment down below and hit that subscribe button if you did enjoy it at any point. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching today's video.